down oh. and <laughs> there you go, Steve. All right, so uh, for September, we're going to talk about September as preparedness month. Uh, it seems like we've kind of done this every year in September, and I was going to get in front of you and show you a bag like this one. That's not my bag. That we call a get home bag. And then I decided to throw all that out. And the reason I'm throwing all that out is there is some important parts of what ham radio preparedness is that we do right here. Um, there's also things that we do in net. You know, when you get on the two meter net and check in, there's some surprising results that come from that. One is, how many of you have ever heard just a little snippet of somebody's voice on two meters and you knew who it was? That's what the nets do. It makes everybody know a voice. I always can tell the right voice. I can always tell. I can always tell his voice. Everybody. Jordan makes it neat. And, and honestly, that becomes even more oh, yes. pronounced when you run in it. I ran the Friday night net for a couple of years. I'm telling you, I knew every voice. I might not have known your face, but if I heard your voice at the ham fest in Joplin, I'm like, hey, that's Larry. That's the answer I'm ST. <laughs> you know. So these are the preparedness that we do because we meet in group. Now I don't want to make this into an advertisement for an ARRL club. It just so happens that's what we are. But when we get together and we have our little meetings, we talk about things, we have a chat over dinner, the important part that happens is we all start to network together. Everybody has their own skill set that they bring. I mean, some of us are really good at antennas. Some of us know, you know, the interior parts of a radio inside and out. We have people that are more social. They're here to talk. All of those traits, all of those things that we have as a group add together. So we become more than just the numbers that we have here. And honestly, we've come out of a pretty awesome special event that we did. And we performed well because we are a group, because we get together, because we share our uh, skill sets with each other. How many of you survived the 87, well, the well, 07 high school? How about 87? <laughs> yeah. No, I wasn't here. I survived. 1887? <laughs> there was a bad one in 85, too. I wasn't here in 1887. So, <laughs> how many remember the last one? 72. One here then. <laughs> we, had, we had the blizzard of 73. That was up north. The snow was that deep. And I guess that's kind of where I learned that because you have neighbors. Because we are a group. <coughs> Franklin says, I got moved. We all jumped to him and we helped as best we can. That's the importance of getting together as a group. It makes us all stronger than the numbers that we have. Absolutely. So, I've, I've had the question, what, what's the point of a club? Well, we all get together, we all become friends, we all know each other. But more importantly, when the really bad stuff comes down, we know who to talk to. Everybody start pointing fingers? That guy. Oh, your camera. Well, the thing goes on. It's still, still recording. We're good. <laughs> um, kind of, kind of blew my train thought here. But anyway, um, one of the things that we need to present to people that ask us is, you know, I, I hear this a lot. Why? Why do you bother? What's the well, Tech Day, 
Rodney had a, a couple showed up. You got that little bail thing right here. And we're like, we want you to program this so that we can get a hold of our son if something happens. And so my mind went right to, well, how do you know your son's going to have a radio that works on the same frequency? How do you know? If you don't use it, you don't get on the air. You aren't, you aren't checking it out. You aren't doing the ham radio preparedness. What's the point in happening? Because it's going to be preppers, they don't want to be ham. Yeah. Yeah, a very fun situation. Now, yeah. I started out years and years ago, that, that was, prepping was a big part. Of it. Yeah. Having that get home back like I talked about. But the truth is, the prepping that we're doing is, I hear a little bit of Rodney's voice on the radio, and I know it's him. I know that voice. We don't hear it very often, though. <laughs> and, and maybe that's what gets it, to say, oh, hey, that was Rodney. Yeah. <laughs> was that Rodney? The president, yeah. <laughs> You're too busy. Yeah. So, it's all the So, you know, uh, going back to the ice storm thing, uh, there were several hams in the community that were helped greatly by the fact that they could actually communicate. If anybody remembers uh, CFQ, they CFQ. Yeah, 87, he ran a cord out through his window and connected it to his lawnmower, so he had four volts for his thing. And, but he was on, you know, he was on there on the floor line, talking to Jim was alive back then, and, you know, we handled requests. <coughs> Uh, wife got a phone call from a friend. I came to a house just this way a little bit to check on somebody that they couldn't get through and come to find out they'd gone over to the neighbor's house because the neighbor had heat and they didn't. So, you know, those kind of little things as a group we will do for each other because I know who you are. They called me up and said, man, I got cows out. If I had the time, I would go out and get help Dave get his cows back in. You couldn't expect that from anybody on the street. And that's a crazy analogy, but yeah. We He's going to call you going now. Yeah, yeah, you're going to get a call now. <laughs> and Dave, this is Dave from Bodar. And I'm <laughs> saying, man, this is Apocalypse. <laughs> Come and help me. No, we would. We would. We would come out there. So, you know, this this is the point I'm making about preparedness is what we're doing here today all adds to your guys' preparedness for everyone because we all know each other. We all know that we help each other. Uh, you have a weird problem, and this falls back into his. Uh -huh. The Elmer thing. And he said, Oh, we got to do this, we do that. It's like, dude, we already are. <laughs> <laughs> but we're working out. <laughs> so, anyway, short and sweet. I'm going to call it. That's pretty much my thoughts for nine minutes. Does anyone have any questions or anything you'd like to have? Oh, well, you've already raised your hands. Yeah, you're on. Yeah, you're yeah. committed now. <laughs> um, so, um, during the 2007 ice storm, what were like two or three of the most active uh, repeaters around here that people used for communications, whether it be just to talk to someone, uh, to pass the time because the power's out and we can watch more in the afternoon? Or uh, for like stuff like wellness checks, or hey, uh, I can't get out, and I'm I'm out of milk, or I'm out of my medicine. Just to pick it up. The four nine was the most active in 07, and I never heard that request. Really? 
Now, it may have come from another ham asking another one over there from cell phone. Yeah. Because we didn't all have smartphones, but we all had phones. Yeah. But, again, it's because I knew somebody, you know, huh? that we would, we would come to. You know. And same goes with, let's, let's just say, Patty had won that radio that she got. But I went around there to build her an antenna. I know she knew the people that she could have asked. But that's because of club getting together as a group. And so importantly, we want to pull people in for the purpose of we care about you, we care about your safety. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes it gets to be like brothers and sisters. <laughs> well, these these two guys came and put my antenna up when I was new in town. Yeah. And Don over here, he gave me an antenna, and a few months later, he came over and installed it. It's not everybody that would That's give you an antenna. Yeah, that is an antenna. <laughs> it's not everybody that would give you an antenna and then come in and install it. For you. He must have really wanted it going. <laughs> He's taking up space. He was sending out the herd. He was sitting there thinking, oh, I'd like to hear it work. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't know anything about it. it was a building they were going to knock down and it was on the roof. Yeah. So, well, I'll take, I'll take it. And it works good. 25 years later, he got it. Wow. <laughs> There's a, a ham out in Stratford. You guys may know who it was. I can't remember his name. He was, he was the mayor of Stratford for a time. Uh, I, I, I I 146.58 was the frequency they usually were on. Seven Junior is the guy who I'm thinking of. That was the mayor for a long time. Well, I live just down the street from him a little bit. And he calls me out of the blue one day. He says, hey, you want to come with me and pick up an antenna? And I'm like, what kind of antenna? It's a three-meter satellite dish at the RV's Park in Branson. He <laughs> says, you sure about this? He goes, oh, yeah, it'll be easy. And I'm like, that, that seal is right there. We didn't get back till 11 o'clock. We left at Oh, no. <laughs> A lot of my equipment was just Quincy and Jeff's stuff. Old guys I knew from Quincy who got stuff and they're like, I'm moving to Florida. Okay. Here you go. Pass them on. Yeah. 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 So, you know, if you ever get to doubt why it is we do meetings, this is not the There's all those things. Well, you get everybody's got different talents, too. You know, like Jordan's computer. You have this here in Fox, you call that little Somebody else might be a machinist, somebody else might be a carpenter, who knows? Yeah. And that's what makes the world go <clears throat> So I said it would be short, and it's still light yet, so we're good. <coughs> <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs>